How's it going everybody? In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make this forge from an old propane tank and some old pipe. To start this off we're going to start off with a old propane tank I think this is seven gallon something like that. What I'm going to be doing is cutting off the top portion and the bottom portion it's just held on by a couple of welds. This propane tank has been voided. Now, this was an old in-use propane tank for my travel trailer. Once it ran empty I pulled the valve and then I went through and filled this completely with water emptied it out, filled it up again, and then drained it. So this has no flammable gases in it, has no flammable oils in it, nothing. It's just a steel drum at the moment. Rabbits are going weird. For this I have an angle grinder and a cutoff wheel on it. This is a fairly thick cutoff wheel. I'm going to be slicing through these welds. Steel tank is now missing its top. And bottom had to give the bottom a little bit of help. So this step, it's easier to see if I take a marker. This has a seam right there. And I'd like to avoid trying to cut through the seam because hard and it'll wear through my disc a lot faster. So, make a mark and just kind of cut across the line all the way around. The line's not showing up that great because it's been raining and the tank is wet, but going to cut it clean in half, straight down the center, and you know, if you really wanted to do it that way, you could make two forges out of this. I'm going to make one forge and a lid out of this, but to do that, I have to cut it clean down the middle. That's where these couple of pieces of metal come in handy. You wedge them underneath, it doesn't roll around on you, or at least not as much. So, let's cut it in half. Steel drum, or the propane tank, is cut in half. It's been empty for a while, and it's been open for a while. So, there's a little bit of rust in there. That's not a huge deal. You see what I mean when I said that you could make two. You don't have to settle with just one. Personally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this piece here as the lid so that if I want to extinguish the fire, I put the lid on and it'll put it out. Also, having a lid for it will help keep out rain if it's going to be outside, which mine is. If you have it inside, you don't need to do the extra work of making this into a lid. And to make it into a lid, all you have to do is go through, put a handle on it, call it done. Just straight on top. But. That's not for everybody. If you wanted, you could make this deeper. Just cut it a little higher on one side, and you'll have more of an more height on it. That's not 100% necessary, so I'm not going to do that. One of the reasons why I cut it straight through the middle of the threads instead of just cutting around it is if I have something on bar stock, this will be a good place for it to rest because it won't want to shift around all that much. So that's why I'm leaving this here, not doing anything with it. Like I'll 
go through and take a file and smooth it out, but other than that, I'm not touching it. So the next thing that I'm going to have to do is start setting up the portions that are going to go inside here so that I can force air through some pipes and have air coming up through the bottom of the coals. Let's go do that. For this next part, for the diffuser body, I have two nipples, that's what this part is called, and two elbows. They're going to get threaded together and cinched up. And they're going to look like that with the T going one way and the two elbows pointing another. But what I'm going to use is a pipe vise hold on to the elbow doesn't have to be super tight just has to hold it and hold it down and I'm going to cinch both sides all the way down as far as they'll go it's assembled it's good and tight Now it, I could probably get another turn out of this, but I don't want to over crank it and break it. So, this is where it's going to be. Now I have to go through and start measuring out pipes for this and drilling holes. The first holes that I'm going to drill in this are going to be two mounting holes and one drain hole straight in the middle or straight in the bottom the holes that are gonna the the mounting holes are gonna be front and back or top and bottom depending on if you're still looking at it as a tank or a bowl and then the drain hole is going to be right in the middle so that any rainwater that comes in, even with this with this covered, any rainwater that comes in will be draining straight out of the bottom. It'll affect a little bit the efficiency of the forge, but hopefully not too much. So let's drill some holes. I now have two mounting holes, one at one end, one at the other, and I decided to put three weep holes because with this lip that's here from it originally being built, if any water came in at the front or back, the water would pool here and would increase corrosion. What I did to make it so I didn't burn, burn out my drill bit is I used a little bit of regular water just to cool off the bit as I was drilling and it worked fairly well. The last hole that I need to drill in this portion right here is down here towards the bottom so that I could go through and mount that at the bottom and have a piece of three quarter inch iron pipe stick in through so that I can have the two pipes running along the bottom and all the air from them diffusing up through the gravel. Both pieces are cut and threaded and now you can get a better idea on how this is going to work. Two caps on each end. It's going to get tightened up and it's going to get holes cut into the bottom using a 
angle grinder just to make some nice neat slits. But first I gotta go through, tighten this all up, make it nice and pretty. Oh, as pretty as it's gonna be, it's still just a rusted piece of steel. And well, I might even go through and thread this end just in case I wanna attach something to it later. But we're coming up on the end. Just a couple of things tightened up, and a couple of holes cut, or a couple of slices made, and this will be ready to be used. There are now two slits throughout the entire length of the piece of steel. If I need to later, I can go through and widen these out to increase airflow, but right now I think this might be fine. I went through and cooled it off in water because it was a little too hot to touch, but it goes vent down in the bottom. The rest of it's going to be filled up with cinder because I can get cinder fairly easily, but as of right now, this part is done. Now let's go through and make a very simple stand. With these half inch holes that I drilled, I have a couple of half inch nuts that I can slip all the way in and bolt them to something. Since I don't currently have a table to mount this directly to, I'm going to be mounting it to a couple of pieces of angle iron so I can put it onto a table and not have it rock around because you don't really want fire doing this. Now what I've done is I went through and mounted a piece of angle iron with a single bolt this back one here is still a little wobbling, but eventually I plan to make a table or a stand for this. Now I have to go through and break the edges and take a file and just make it so they're not razor blades because I caught myself on it, took a little piece of skin off my finger and fill it with gravel and then it's done. This is the forge all filled up with cinder it's a type of gravel and now it's ready to be used. It's a little late in the day right now so in the next video I'm going to light this up and give it a try and probably make a lid for it. This is going to cover over just as a protection from the rain, but if you want to see if it works, you're going to have to wait for the next one. Well, I have a PayPal link down in the description if you feel like donating to this channel. It really helped me out. If you want to follow me on Instagram, see what I'm doing on a more daily basis, you can find the link to that also in the description. Um, that's all I have for today. Y'all have fun. Bye.